it's complex. And ultimately, it means that the work you do is on behalf of flesh and blood human beings. Um, their lives, uh, things that are meaningful to them, whether it's public benefits, immigration status, incarceration, uh, working on behalf of low income communities, and on and on, are things that you will be working for. So it's not Black Acre, it's not a uh, uh, a simulated figure in a fact pattern. These are people. <clears throat> and that's a wonderful opportunity, wonderful opportunity, and one which is really the crux of what the practice of law is all about, which means ultimately clinical education is not about the practice of law. It is the practice of law. And what a wonderful opportunity for all of you to experience that aspect of what you'll all be doing. It's not an aspect, the crux of what you'll be doing in the midst of your clinical education. So a little bit about what you'll be learning more specifically. Um, there are many techniques that go into effective lawyering that extend beyond what many people see on TV. It's not only trial practice. In fact, um, sometimes law, you never go to court at all, let alone trial practice. And even trial lawyers um, do many other things. Um, trials are relatively rare, actually, across the profession. But what all lawyers do is they counsel clients, they negotiate with others, they interview clients and witnesses and others in order to try to discern what the facts are. Drafting, drafting contracts, drafting orders, drafting letters, memoranda of various sorts. And you also will be engaging, and goes back a little bit to what I said, in all of the things that lead to fact investigation. Um, in court opinions, there will be a statement of facts. I've been practicing um, 25, 30 years, however long it is, I don't like to think about it. Uh, I've yet to have a client come up to me with a multiple choice question, which is the right answer to my contracts problem, or a fact hypothetical. It doesn't work that way. You have to find out, construct narratives, and figure out the best way to represent your client's interests. A few techniques more broadly as to how legal education works. One is collaboration. Being a lawyer is intensely collaborative. You're working with other lawyers, with staff, with clients, with people. All of you will be uh, split into teams. You will be working with other students, clinic-wide and with individuals. So in a law school exam, um, collaboration is called something else. It's called a violation of the honor code. In the clinic, it's the core of what you're doing and what lawyers do more generally. You'll also have an opportunity to, to reflect about what your professional role is. This might be something you've sort of assumed. I'm going to go to law school, I'm going to be a lawyer, but lawyers do all sorts of things professionally. What are your goals? How do you conceive of your role systemically? How do you conceive of yourself vis-a-vis -vis clients? It's what the legal profession is there more broadly. How do we contribute to the administration of justice? These are all issues that are crucial and that you will learn about. Another benefit, and by the way, this is a, a very small list. The benefits are very, very long. People have, have thought about this and, and could be 25, 30 different aspects of clinical education that you will benefit from. Uh, but another one is career insights. Some people come into the clinic thinking, I don't really want to litigate, and then um, will emerge from the clinic experience and say, wow, I really want to litigate. Or, gee, I didn't think I want to litigate. And man, do I not want to litigate. It varies all along the um, spectrum of what lawyers do. And of course, many lawyers also do not litigate at all, but engage in transactional work. Um, and that's a, a not insignificant amount of you who are uh, UB students. And finally, the people or organizations you will be representing are by definition low income. So these are folks in Baltimore City, the region, sometimes across the state, who otherwise can't afford legal representation. They are folks who 
systemically, can't have an advocate. The adversary system works differently for them. Or you can even argue whether it's a meaningful adversary at all if they enter into litigation without representation. The great um, gift that you will have, among others, but a preeminent gift is that you will be acting on behalf of folks who are disempowered, who are in need, varying from being able to keep a, a house over their heads or a family intact or to um, be, who are incarcerated and have a factual claim of innocence to ensure um, status in an immigration context, sending back to a, uh, the place from which they come might lead to death. These are important things, and I'm omitting many other problems that face our clients. So that's the social milieu, the, the foundation, the, the place where you will be learning all of the things that I have been discussing thus far. So many of you might be nervous about this experience and that's perfectly normal. In fact, uh, I personally get anxious for people who aren't anxious. Now, I don't mean that you should be overly anxious, and, but you know, it should be a concern, this is scary stuff. One of my favorite jokes uh, comes from Stephen Wright that apathy is our greatest problem, but who cares? Um, I care, and it won't be a problem that you will have. Uh, one thing about concern you might have is we have an amazing clinical faculty. I know we, we say it very often, but we have a nationally ranked clinical program, um, recognized uh, regionally, nationally, indeed even internationally. Um, and this is something that UB is very proud of as an aspect of what it's able to provide for you. So we have an amazing um, set of faculty members here. And let me just quickly go through the names. Um, I had thought of, of switching the screen to these folks, but uh, I'm a little, the more you try to do on technology, the more chance there is for things to get messed up. So uh, this is in the interest of keeping things at a minimum of being messed up. So for the Civil Advocacy Clinic, we have Michelle Gilman and Emily Poor. For the Community Development Clinic, we have Jamie Lee, Beryl Powell, and Diane Glauber. For the Criminal Practice Clinic, Daniel Schemmer. For the Family Law Clinic, Nicole Miller and Jessica Dan Howder. For the Human Trafficking Prevention Project, Jessica Emerson. Immigrant Rights Clinic, Elizabeth Keyes. Innocence Project Clinic, Michelle Nethercott. Mediation Clinic for Families, uh, Robert Rubinson, yours truly, and Alexandra Smith. Tax Clinic, John Snyder and Sakina Tillman. Veterans Advocacy Clinic, Hugh McLean and Katie Clemens. We have who we call the Writing Doctor. We have a dedicated person, dedicated in more ways than one, to improving students' writing, and she is um, Cheryl Levin. And we have the Director of Externships, Neha Lal. I also uh, would be uh, remiss, at a minimum, not to acknowledge clinic staff. This is a law office who helped make us run, and that is Jaqueta Oram, Roz Williams, uh, and Terry Burke. And thank you to all of them for their incredible help in moving the staff forward. And finally, there is Laura Garcia, who um, I like to think is to, runs a law firm that has complete turnover every three, every semester actually, which is quite an extraordinary job. And she actually is helping the core person who is helping making the ceremony run this morning. So with that, I'd like to turn things over to Dean Ronald Weish, who I, I know all of you know, but just a word in this context. Dean Weish has been an unerring, devoted, committed advocate of the clinics um, to an extraordinary degree. Um, as someone who uh, works with him closely in the role that I have, um, it, it's an accreditation to what the clinic is able to bring to UB and most especially to you, the students. Um, so let me turn things over to Dean Weish for a few words and then he'll introduce our guest speaker. 
Thank you, Professor Rubinson. Um, can everyone hear me? Just give me a thumbs up. Yes, I'm seeing a thumbs up. Um, well, I'm delighted to be here. Let me start by thanking Professor Rubinson for his excellent leadership of the clinical legal program here at UB uh, this year. Um, and to say thank you as well to all of our faculty and staff colleagues. You know, when Professor Rubinson spoke about the fact that we have a nationally renowned clinical program that speaks to both how we do it and who does it. Uh, you students uh, will be in very, very good hands as you begin the practice of law as, uh, as Rule 9 students. Uh, these faculty members, aided by the staff, um, are well-trained, very experienced, not just in the practice of law, one would expect that, but in the pedagogy, in the teaching of, uh, of, of legal practice in the clinical setting. Um, so I welcome all of my uh, colleagues uh, as well. And students, good to see you. Now this is, uh, let's acknowledge, a strange circumstance, a very unusual uh, way in which we're conducting this ceremony. And um, I would ordinarily have had a chance to see you in the building, in the elevators, in the stairway, um, maybe at the Flying Fruit Cafe, grabbing a cup of coffee in these early days of the semester, but, but I haven't been able to do that. You all know that because of the pandemic, we're operating in a remote online format. Um, so I'm so glad to see you all, and I appreciate that everybody uh, uh, put on their, their best uh, attire, their lawyerly attire, uh, for this very significant ceremony. Uh, this is a significant ceremony um, because, as Professor Rubinson said, you are going to be practicing law, not simulating the practice of law. We love simulations here in a law school, uh, moot court, trial practice, lots of things that happen in the classroom. Those are important parts of the education, but this is the real deal. And I love the uh, observation uh, that, that Professor Rubinson had that you can't buy reality in a bookstore. Um, you will have actual clients and you will have solemn responsibilities to those clients. This is so important in your legal education. I predict that for you, as it was for me, uh, that your clinical experience will be uh, the most memorable aspect of your legal education. Um, it will stay with you because it's so vivid uh, to represent individuals and the feeling that you have, first the anxiety and then the satisfaction and the feeling of empowerment that you will have engaging in the practice of law um, will be uh, very gratifying to you and I predict that it will stay with you and make you a better lawyer. Uh, as I go around, you know, I have uh, in my job the responsibility of speaking to many alumni of the law school, uh, very seasoned lawyers of the Maryland uh, Bar Association, the judiciary and others, and they tell me that they remember most vividly their clinical law experience and it helped shape the kinds of lawyers that they are. I'll also observe that uh, this is one of the most important ways our law school connects to the community. You know, when we're in our building, we look out those glass walls and we see the community around us and we know that we are part of this community and we have an obligation to improve um, the way things work and uh, the justice that's delivered to the citizens of, uh, of Maryland. And, uh, and we're gonna do that even virtually. Let me make this observation. We're remote today. Many of you will have the opportunity to come into the building to fulfill your clinic responsibilities. When we worked with our university to determine how this semester would go in light of public health, um, we initially had uh, the hope of more classes. In the Ultimately, we determined that that would not be appropriate. But it was always a bottom line requirement for us that the clinics be in person as much as possible and as much as necessary because of our professional respect to clinics. So I know you've all written communications from your uh, faculty uh, members, from Professor Rubinson and Laura Garcia, about how this is going to work. You're going to have to get those COVID tests to come into the building. Um, but when you need to be there to uh, interview clients, to prepare for court appearances, and even for some, uh, some, some classes, um, you will be able to be in the building. Everybody understood that that was necessary to fulfill our responsibility. So this is such a solemn responsibility that you have that we invited you and your parents here for this ceremony and you'll be taking an oath and to administer the oath we have traditionally invited a judge of the court of appeals maryland's highest court and in recent years that judge is shirley watts and i'm very honored to be able to introduce her to you now for her to offer some remarks judge watts is a native of baltimore and she has had a storied career here in maryland 
Um, she uh, had uh, private practice experience and then worked in the criminal justice system on both sides. She was uh, an assistant state's attorney in Baltimore City and then an assistant federal public defender in the District of Maryland. She became a judge first in a, in an administrative agency. She was the chief judge of the Social Security Administration here in Maryland uh, and then worked her way up from uh, the Baltimore City Circuit Court to the Court of Special Appeals, which is our intermediate appellate court, and since 2013 as a member of the Maryland Court of Appeals, one of seven, seven top judges here in the state. We so appreciate her presence today. She always has wise words, and she's going to find a way to convey her, her energy uh, through the computer screen to all of you. So thank you very much, Judge Watts, for being here. I turn the, uh, the Zoom over to you. Judge, uh, you're up. You think you may need to unmute yourself? Good morning, everyone. Hopefully everyone can hear me now. Good. Dean Weiss, thank you so much for that gracious introduction. And thank you for the opportunity to continue to participate in this very, very important ceremony. I'm always delighted to swear in the student attorneys pursuant to Maryland Rule 19. I've been participating in this ceremony now for many years, but I've never had the opportunity to do so remotely. So this is a first for me. I'd like to take a minute to thank the people who made it possible for us to proceed today under these unique circumstances. In particular, Professor Rubinson, Thank you for facilitating today's ceremony and for your leadership of the clinical program. Dean Weish, what can I say? Thank you once again for making this law school a distinguished academic institution and so influential in the Baltimore and Maryland communities. Thank you. And professors and the staff of the clinical law program, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for your commitment to providing such an outstanding legal education opportunity. I've said this before, I think I say it every time I speak, but without you, this opportunity simply would not be possible for the students and their clients. And students, thank you for participating this year under these circumstances in the clinical program. I also want to thank your parents, your family and friends, those who have supported you so far on your journey toward a legal career. Students, although we are not able to gather in person today, that does not detract from the circumstance that this is a big deal. This is a significant event. You are about to go from being law students to being student attorneys. Indeed, this will be your very first opportunity to practice law, to represent clients, to appear in court, to give legal advice, to do all of those very important things that Professor Rubens subsequently described. Given the current circumstances, I can predict, or I think that your experience this semester may be slightly different from that in previous years. I was very gratified to hear Dean Weish say that there would be in-person representation and that you would be in the building and in court as much as possible. But nonetheless, I predict that your experience may include a mixture of online and remote practice of law. And you will be providing access to legal services during very uncertain times and indeed stressful times. Regardless of the changes mandated by the times though, I know that your clinical experience will be extremely, extremely meaningful. Indeed, the legal services that you provide this year are likely to be in even greater demand than they have in previous years. You may see a bottleneck of cases 
brought about by the necessity of shutdown due to the COVID-19 emergency. And the people that you see, your clients, may have an increased need for legal services. All of us are aware that these are times of great uncertainty. People across Maryland are facing increased health challenges, financial challenges, and other hardships, in addition to the legal mess that they may bring to you. And very importantly, there is a renewed emphasis in our country on the issue of equality under the law for all. It would not be an overstatement to say that right now we are living through the making of history. To say the least, you are preparing to the legal session at a very, very, very weak time. As a result of the challenges that we face and that we will continue to face, the availability of legal services is even more essential today than ever before. It's more likely today that your clients will be worried and stressed when you see them, not only about the matters that required them to seek legal representation, but also about conditions underlying their very existence. At times like these, it is more important than ever that you listen carefully, that you be responsive, that you be warm, that you serve as a calming presence in the midst of what may seem like to your clients utter chaos. At times, it may be necessary for you to render not only legal advice, but also just to look at a client and to assure the client that you do your best. I am reminded of a quote from Maya Angelou when I think about the condition we face today. The expression that I have been thinking of is a saying. It speaks to what people will remember about you when they think of you. The saying goes like this. I have learned that people will forget what you said People may forget what you did, but people will never, ever forget how you made them feel. I think that we can all agree that these days, the way that you interact with people and the way that you make them feel is very important. I know that when facing a challenge like what we have been experiencing over the past months, it may be difficult to stay upbeat at all times. But from my perspective, there is every reason to be optimistic. Although we don't know yet how long the conditions causing today's uncertainty will last, it is safe to say, and I firmly believe this, that in the end, we will come out better prepared to meet the issues of the future. Today's trying times will make us stronger and more resilient. And it is my hope and my sincere expectation that the challenges of today will make us as lawyers especially aware of the need to be prepared, responsive, and receptive to helping others. I know from experience that when you practice law, not everything goes your way on every occasion. And I think that anyone would agree with that assessment. One important act of being a lawyer though is being adaptable and being able to problem solve and being able to figure things out. And those are among the skills that you will learn as student lawyers. Indeed, being able to figure things out and how to respond to the unforeseen and even unfavorable circumstances is a home of practicing. With that in mind, your clinic experience has the potential to better equip you for your service as student attorneys and as attorneys in the future. Your best to make the most of your time as student attorneys and equally as important, do your best to make a difference in your clients' lives. I wish each of you every success going forward and congratulations on this accomplishment. And now, for the most important part, the oath. 
though we are not in the same room, will the students enrolled in the University of Baltimore clinical program for the fall 2020 semester, please raise your right hands. It is not necessary to stand. Please raise your right hands so that you can be sworn in as student attorneys under Maryland Rule 19 to 20 of the rules governing the admission to the Bar of Maryland. Please respond by saying yes. Do you solemnly swear that enrolled in the University of the Law Clinical Program? Yes. 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 Okay. That you are in good academic standing. Yes. 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 At least one third of the total credit hours of your law school education. That you have read and are familiar with the Maryland Rules of Professional Conduct and the Maryland Rules of Procedure relevant to the practice area of your clinic. Having answered yes to all of the above, we're hereby admitted to practice in any trial court in this state or, the or otherwise engage in the practice of law in the state of Maryland from this state through the last day of exams under the supervision of the faculty teaching in your clinical program. Congratulations and well done, students. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Congrats. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Judge Watts. Um, the eloquence and inspiration you've provided um, when I hear you, you're the truly amazing and thank you so much for coming and sharing your thoughts uh, with everyone this morning so thank you so much um, I'm going to read students names all of um, to give you a, a moment although not in person you know as I was thinking about this um, we try to make things as real as possible when we're in a virtual platform I thought for those of you who have young children on mute and you can hear crying and, and hubbub or um, you know air horns when your name is called I actually shouldn't even plant that in your mind please do that uh, despite the reality that might come along with that um, but I will to acknowledge all of you uh, and to congratulate each of you, read everyone's names. Um, and please, uh, parents, friends, yourself, give yourself a nice, a nice pat on the back uh, as you move forward in clinical career. So in the Civil Advocacy Clinic, we have Edagogo Akinawe, Catherine Burgess, Anthony Churgott, Katie DeLuca, and Rohina Azizian. For the Community Development Clinic, Kristen Chu, Maxwell Cook, Erica, Erica Engelstad, Wee Cheng Fen, Alexandra Filsinger, Gabriela Givinazzo, Scott Jenkins, Erin Kay, Trey Lundy, Gary Nash, Toyomi O'Hara, Juan Puga, and Anna Zula. Woo! Congratulations. Okay, making a mark by that person's name because of the unmute activity. Um, so you'll be hearing from me after the, um, after the ceremony. For the Criminal Practice Clinic, Meredith Ashley, Bartholomew Choi, Nandan Dave, Kendall Goldstein, Tatiana Hill, Autumn Lee, Morgan Lynch, and Charles Pitts. For the Family Law Clinic, Isabel Garcia, 
Justin Kim, Jasmine Martinez, Taylor Machetti, Amy Moore, Shay Reynolds, Shannon Thomas, and Julia Shen. For the Human Trafficking Prevention Project, Joshua Sakala, Victoria DeVore, Laura Opon, Sydney Sanzoni, Amanda Taylor, and Alicia Vines. For the Image Rights Clinic, Yunaha Goat, Charles Baker, Taylor Bayat, Jordan Black Matthews, Sydney Chanmugam, Nicholas Martin. The Low Income Taxpayers Clinic, Drew Berkowitz, Joshua Crockett, Joseph Feldman, Justice Finch. Oh my God, I didn't even video it. Justin Libertori. Stupid thing. Oleg, Oleg Purpish, Amanda Scammer. For the Low Income Taxpayers Clinic, these are second semester students taking clinic for a second semester. Robert Brayland, Adam Kruger, Candace Miller. The Veterans Advocacy Clinic, Anthony Baranoskis, Anna DeLeon, Anne Franchetti, Andrew Key, Carly Keir, Richard Klingerman, and Keith Rohr. For the Innocence uh, Project Clinic, Madison Butchness, Adam Codd, Clark Rich, Niger Richardson, Alexandra Waller, and Medeha Zer. For the Innocence Project second semester, Elizabeth Page. And for the Mediation Clinic for Fans, Abacasis, Christian Coward, Valerie Glenn, Megan Michelson, Sean Murphy, Mark Potter, and Sun Truong. So congratulations, everyone. And I can clap because I'm unmuted. You can all clap if you can hear me. So warm congratulations, hearty congratulations on behalf of UB and on behalf of the UB clinical program. Um, UB cordially invites you to go into your kitchen and get some coffee and donuts or muffins or whatever you have at hand. Um, and we wish you all the best moving forward this semester and beyond as you pursue the rest of your um, law school career. So onward, enjoy your clinical experience. Thanks very much. Congratulations, students. Congratulations, everyone. All right, Allie, go. Allie! <laughs> Great job, Joshua. Good. We taught you good job. Congratulations, Madiha. Love you. Congratulations, Val. Great job. Congratulations, Nandi. Love you. I am. We are all proud of you. Great job. Congratulations, Josh. Keep up the great work. Go, Nija. Congratulations. We love you and support you. Congratulations, Congratulations. Congratulations, Jada. Love you. Congratulations, Joshua. Congratulations, baby girl, Nija Richardson. <laughs>